Hey everybody, Tracy Brown here. I hope you're having a great weekend. It's Saturday and talking just a little bit about kind of wrapping the week up around food and feelings and a little bit of self-care stuff. I know in our um, Q&A yesterday we had some cool questions about just people's fear around food and of course we have to unpack that, you know, and, and make, you can't tackle everything at one time, but when you can do is always follow one thread and follow that through because that'll lead you where to go. And sometimes I've had sessions where literally we start off at one place and we end up somewhere totally different, which is what actually need to happen. So you might start with a food journal review and it turns into something more than you could have ever dreamed that they really, really needed. And they're feeling thrilled that um, you helped them hold the space for that. So I want to encourage you all to either follow the food, follow the sensation, even follow the feeling and you'll end up where your clients need to go, okay? And it doesn't mean that we're neglecting working through the food. It's just, it's just part of that ball of yarn that they are there to try to unwind. So anyway, I wanna talk a little about the language of feelings in a really just quick, simple way for your clients is that um, oftentimes our clients don't have a, like, a language for feelings. They know like happy, mad, sad, afraid, and sometimes I break it down that simply for people, I'll say like, well, I'll ask them like, how do they feel about something? Let's say, and they'll go on and kind of tell me a story about something or they'll change the subject or they'll, they'll be in their head, like what so-and-so did and what they thought they should have done. And I'll say, well, wait a minute. I just want you to, can we stop a second and say, you know, I, I hear you, but I'm wondering how you felt about all that. And just to help you a little bit, you know, just think about happy, mad, sad, or afraid. You know, which one more closely matches that? Sometimes people don't ask them those questions, how they feel about things. Um, how do they know how they feel or what they feel about things? And um, those are the best places to start. You might also, and I have this, you know, sheets like this in all my trainings, but literally feelings list. And so I kind of break it down to not only like happy, mad, sad, or afraid, but like all kinds of variations of everything plus an intrinsic value, you know, value things like, um, you know, integrity or um, um, flowy or whatever. And then you can also have a list of somatic phrases like jittery, buzzy, whatever. Um, but you can, I don't always start with, I don't overwhelm people too much um, at one time, but I would definitely just start with something simple. Um, literally when you're having them do their food journals, can they write down not only their food, their hunger fullness, or if they're not at that stage yet, they're just writing down their food and doing meal planning. You know, can they also write down, I felt scared, I felt overwhelmed, and you want to unpack overwhelmed because that can mean all kinds of things. But anyway, a good way to start this is to start to do it with yourself. So I'm going to encourage you today, this day, it's Saturday, to really start to think more about how you feel about things and how sometimes it feels pretty clear and sometimes it doesn't, and then be curious about that. So I hope today's video helps, and I'll talk to you all soon. Take care.